The list of things that the colonizers took away from Africa is endless. One priceless piece of our identity that was wickedly snatched from us is our artifacts that are now scattered all over the world, miles away from their native lands. The British are the biggest culprits of the shameful plunder of Africa's cultural treasures, with the country's museums having become a trove of stolen works of art. To the looters, our artifacts hold nothing more than aesthetic and monetary value, but to Africa, the pieces carry our history, cultures, and our very sense of being and identity. These works of art timelessly document the history of families, clans, and villages that made up ancient African societies. With most of the indigenous knowledge having been erased and stolen from us, we are left with little evidence of Africa's pre-colonial history. Here are some of Africa's stolen artifacts that were shipped off African shores through dubious means. The Benin Bronzes Our first stop is the Kingdom of Benin, where in 1897, British forces looted thousands of intricate brass and bronze sculptures known as the Benin Bronzes. These masterpieces once adorned the royal palace and temples, but today, they are scattered across museums in Europe and the United States. Nefertiti Bust and Rosetta Stone, Egypt Moving to ancient Egypt, Egypt has been consistently campaigning for Germany to return the statue of Queen Nefertiti. The Germans took the 3,400-year-old bust of the Great Queen in 1913 using fraudulent documents. The country reportedly considered returning the statue in 1935, but Hitler decided against it. While Egyptians struggle to get what is rightfully theirs, Germany continues to profit from Nefertiti. The figure draws more than a million visitors every year to the Nils Museum in Berlin, which explains why the European country keeps monopolizing the artwork. Egypt has also been pushing to get back the Rosetta Stone, the 2,200-year-old slab of black basalt with a hieroglyphic, demotic, and Greek inscription that was the linguistic key to deciphering Egyptian hieroglyphics. The stone was shipped out of the North African country in 1799 during French colonial rule and is now in possession of the British Museum. It's unclear how it ended in the hands of the British, but what is certain is that there was no consent from the Egyptians. The Ethiopian Treasures In 1868, the British captured Magdala, Emperor Tewedros II's mountain capital in northwest Ethiopia and left destruction in their wake. Among their crimes, the British army looted Ethiopian churches of a range of valuable cultural objects and treasures, including crowns, gold and silver crosses, and numerous manuscripts documenting Ethiopia's history from the era of Solomon and Sheba to the early 19th century. Various illustrated Geir's manuscripts were also stolen, according to historian Richard Pankhurst, who campaigned tirelessly for the return of Ethiopian cultural artifacts. More than 10 elephants were needed to carry the plunder across the Bashilo River to the nearby Dalanta Plain. Some of the artifacts were auctioned off while others are still held at the British Museum, Victoria and Albert Museum, and the Queen's Library at Windsor Castle. Many other treasures were stolen from Ethiopia. In 2005, Italy returned an ancient granite obelisk almost seven decades after it was plundered by Italian troops. The Zimbabwe Bird When Europeans discovered the Great Zimbabwe Kingdom in the 16th century, they refused to believe that native Africans built such a civilization. The Great Zimbabwe Monument was constructed between the 11th and 14th centuries by the indigenous Shona people and it serves as a testament to ancient African civilization that existed before colonization. Found in the monument were a series of cultural artifacts, including soapstone bird carvings known as the Zimbabwe bird. Needless to say, these artworks were pillaged and sent to museums across Europe and America. Colonizer Cecil John Rhodes took some of the stone-carved birds to South Africa, four of which were returned in 1981, a year after Zimbabwe gained independence. A part of one of the birds ended up in the hands of a German missionary who sold it to the Ethnological Museum in Berlin in 1907. The museum finally handed back the piece to Zimbabwe in 2003. 
the iconic Zimbabwe bird is an emblem of the country, appearing on the national flag and coat of arms. Bangwa Queen, Cameroon once known as the world's most expensive piece of African art, the Bangwa Queen has exchanged hands of many art collectors since she was stolen from her royal shrine in Cameroon. The wooden sculpture, which is believed to be more than a thousand years old, was taken away from German colonial explorer Gustave Conro in the 1890s. Conro entered the Bangwa village under the guise of seeking trade relations and supplies, only to snatch the memorial statue right under the owner's nose. In 1990, the artwork sold at the New York auction for a record-breaking $3.4 million, making it the world's most expensively priced African artwork at the time. The Ife Head Now, let's explore the Ife Head, a masterpiece of naturalistic sculpture from Nigeria, stolen in the early 20th century. It found its way into a private collection before being recovered and returned to Nigeria in 2010. The Dogon Mask Venturing into Mali, the Dogon mask representing the rich Dogon culture was stolen in the 1970s and ended up in a French museum. Efforts are ongoing to repatriate the significant cultural artifact. The Great Mask of Mali Mali is home to the Great Mask, a stunning wooden mask stolen in the 1970s. Despite calls for repatriation, it remains in a French museum highlighting the ongoing struggle for the return of African cultural heritage. The Mapungubwe Gold Rhino Our journey takes us to South Africa, where the Mapungubwe Gold Rhino, a symbol of a thriving ancient kingdom, was illegally excavated and smuggled out of the country. Despite efforts, its current whereabouts remain unknown. The Sarcophagus of Seti I Finally, we explore the sarcophagus of Seti I, an ancient Egyptian masterpiece taken from its tomb, currently housed in the Sir John Soanes Museum in London. Its repatriation is a topic of ongoing discussion. These stories remind us of the importance of acknowledging and rectifying the historical injustices surrounding the theft of ancient African treasures. As we conclude our journey, let's continue to support efforts for the repatriation of these invaluable artifacts. Thank you for joining us on Historical Africa. And remember to like, share and subscribe for more insightful content. Until next time, cheers and have a good one.